Learn something new that you want to learn. There is a well-known multimillionaire uh, in the 1980s. He published that. Oh, he now, what's funny is after you started making some paychecks, a lot of that mocking went away. Yeah. What we've noticed is that when our lives are more disciplined, our finances are stronger as well. We found four powerful principles that can transform your life and impact your finances. A lot of these principles, highly successful people have used. A lot of these principles, millionaires have used as well. So what are they? Number one, confront a fear and overcome it. Number two, learn something new that you want to learn. Number three, control your sleep. Number four, choose your friends wisely. So number one, confront a fear and overcome it. Nail, what's wrong with fear? Fear will paralyze a person. It will make someone be nervous or anything like that. And therefore, they will not be able to take chances and do stuff that they want to do. So when you get rid of fear, you will be feeling more confident and you can be able to go all in and try to take away all your fears. And when you take away your fear, it helps you with... Um, what is the right way? Um, it helps you with like um, go get it kind of um, attitude, you know. Right. When you just like go and get it, and just like you know what, I'm going to do this. It get it. You go and get it. For example, I'm a YouTuber. I'm a professional YouTuber. I, that's my job. And when I started, I was so nervous, and I always encouraged myself in the Lord, saying, "No, don't be scared. If you keep on going, you'll be able to make it in with this, with what I wanted to achieve." And guess what? Without fear, I was able to get it and where to get. Get where I am right now so yeah okay. I think when you get rid of fear you are able to go and get like go get her is that the right way right. Yeah. yeah so fear can slow you down it can paralyze you it can devastate you if you're in a fight for whatever reason and you have fear at the very least it's going to slow you down I read a quote from a kung fu grandmaster and he said you can take away my life but you can't take away my confidence he fully understood that when you lose your confidence in something, you have fear. And when you have fear, you will fight less effectively. For example, it's much more effective to fight on the balls of your feet going forward than it is on your heels rocking back. So, Nail, what are some things that people are afraid of? Um, heights. <laughs> 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 and I think that people are afraid of. For me, it's water, okay. swimming. So I, w one time I nearly drowned when I was still at university. My friends called yeah. me to come and swim with them, and then when I was t and I, I told them, I said, "Guys, I cannot swim." They say, "No, no, you'll be fine. Just come and swim." And then I lost. I went on by the rail, and then I lost my grip, and then I went in water. And ever since that, I think now I call it phobia. I'm really scared of water. That even when I walk by the canal, I make sure that it's very far from me because that thought never leaves my mind because I nearly died that day. Yeah, so that's, that's what fear does to me. Yeah. So people can be afraid of even starting a business. Yeah. People can be afraid of moving to a new location when they know that their family would be better in a new location. People can be afraid of asking a person out. I bet there's a lot of single guys who are still single because they're too afraid of asking that one girl out that they really want to learn. And the big one is public speaking. Nail, if you were afraid of speaking in public, would you be able to have your own YouTube channel? Oh, no way. <laughs> <laughs> Although I was though, I was very nervous, but I still, I worked on it, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. my <laughs> wife has her own YouTube channel and she's been doing it for the last few years and yeah, it's too. become pretty successful. And she has seen a lot of transformation in her life. Now, public speaking is a huge one. I've learned that public speaking is the number one fear for Americans. For me, it was a phobia. When I was in high school, when I was a teenager, I absolutely hated speaking in public and I avoided it at all costs. But then when I was 15 years old, when I was a freshman, I was forced to give a speech in class and it went horribly. I was visibly nervous. My voice was shaking. And I was, uh, I remember I came to a point where I was talking about the pituitary gland and I said, pituitary gland, and my voice cracked. And the whole class just went in an uproar, just laughing. It was a horrible experience for me. I uh, avoided giving speeches for the rest of my high school career. 
And even later on, when I was 18, and I was actually valedictorian of the high school, I was too afraid of giving a speech in front of the student body, and they had to select someone else. I think I'm the only person in history where the valedictorian did not actually speak to his student body. Now, I went through college, I went through young adult, just avoiding it at all costs. I absolutely hated the first day of class or when you go to a church for the first time and you have to stand up and give your name and where you're from. I hated that 100%. But then I got fed up. I decided to do something about it. And I went and joined something called a Toastmasters uh, class, where I interacted with about five or six other people who had a phobia for speaking. And we learned how to give speeches and we practiced with each other. And that fear ended after a few months. I have absolutely zero fear in giving a speech in front of people now. I can give a speech in front of a huge audience and it wouldn't affect me at, at all. And interestingly, when I was 18 years old, I was too afraid to speak in front of a student body. But now, now that I overcome the fear, I've seen a transformation in my life. And I've been able to speak to several high schools in several different countries. And it's been a huge transformation in my life. So a great goal or a great principle would be to confront the fear and overcome it. And you'll see great transformation in your life. Principle number two. Learn something new that you want to learn. People love to learn. Babies love to learn. Children love to learn. Teenagers love to learn. Adults love to learn. Elderly people love to learn. We need to nurture that yearning to learn something new. So learn something new that you want to learn. And when you learn something new that you want to learn, you'll learn it more thoroughly. You'll have greater excitement in your life. You have greater more. You have greater enthusiasm in your life. Nail. What are some things that people can learn? As far as finances. Finances or anything. For me, I think learning a foreign language will mm -hmm. be a good way. But for me, I've been because I'm living in America and I'm married to an American. I was learning Spanish, so I know how to say "como estas." <laughs> <laughs> so learning a foreign language really helps a lot to to transform your mind also i learned english i know i don't have a very good accent like people that speak english but i learned the language mm -hmm. and i taught myself a lot of the language and yeah foreign language is definitely one good one for success yeah people can learn a language people can learn a musical instrument people can learn math people can learn an art or craft people can learn automotive whatever whatever they want to learn they'll be more excited to learn that and probably do a more thorough job. One thing that is of interest to me is mathematics. I took math in, in college because I had to take it. But now I have an interest in it and I find I'm learning it much more thoroughly and I'm retaining it much more. I heard a motivational speaker speak saying, you should try to carve out one hour every single day to learn something new. Well, that's five to seven hours a week. You can learn a lot in that. But for a lot of people, cutting out or carving out an hour a day can be a lot of work. And that leads to the next point. Control your sleep. There's only 24 hours in the day. But what we found is people who are highly successful tend to sleep a little bit less than your average person. People who are highly successful get a lot more done. And if you want to try to carve out an hour to learn something new, you might have to control your sleep. I'm not talking about sleep deprivation. I'm just talking about being more efficient, but also when you're excited about life, you tend to wake up a bit earlier than normal. We've seen in our kids, when they're excited about a toy, they put that toy next to that pillow and the first thing that they do when yep. they wake up <laughs> is they play with their toy. Yeah. They don't just roll back and forth and, and so forth. They just immediately get up and they play with that toy because they're excited to play with it. Same thing, if you're learn, learning something new that you like to learn, you'll probably find yourself wanting to sleep less. You'll find yourself wanting to be more enthusiastic. There's a well-known multimillionaire uh, in the 1980s. He published that he only slept four hours a day. He said if he sleeps four hours a day and his competition sleeps 12 hours a day, it's like he's working full time and they're not working at all. When you can control your sleep, you can become much more effective much more productive and you can work in some of those things that were lacking in your life. 
So how do you do this? Well, what I found is when I'm excited about life, when I'm learning something new, I wake up a little bit earlier. And uh, you definitely don't hit the snooze alarm. I yeah. try to do that thing that I want to learn. I try to do that first thing off the bat so I don't hit that snooze alarm. I'm looking forward to, you know, to uh, doing that activity. But also, I've also found that I typically don't set the alarm when I want to get up. I set the alarm at the very latest. So if that alarm goes off, I know I might be late for work. So I allow just my general body and my excitement in life to wake me up. And I found myself that I wake up two, three hours earlier than you know what a lot of people uh, sleep. So just your excitement in life, just for your productivity, oftentimes you'll find that your body will motivate, your, your, yeah. your mind will motivate your body to wake up. Yeah. Now, some of you might be thinking, well, that might be harmful to your health. But bear this in mind. I found that the giraffe in captivity sleeps about four and a half to five hours a day. But the giraffe in the wild only sleeps, check this out, five to 30 minutes per day. Wow. Five to 30 minutes per day. Why is that? Because he wants to survive. He's afraid of predators and he only sleeps just real short naps. Now there's a huge difference between sleeping five minutes a day and five hours a day. That's like a 50 to one ratio, 60 to <laughs> one ratio. And it's not unhealthy for the giraffe because giraffes in captivity and giraffes in the wild live about the same length of time. So when we're driven to succeed, when we're motivated with life, oftentimes we trim out a lot of that excess of sleep that maybe a lot of other people do. And not only that, in the Bible, we believe the Bible also, it talks about the Proverbs 31 woman. It says that she sleeps very late and then she wakes up very early. Does it say that? Yeah, she goes to bed late and wakes yeah. up early. Yeah, so that that's also a principle that shows that you that if you want to be entrepreneurial, if you want to really be providing in everything, sometimes the sleep is not the best. I mean, it's not... Um, your motivation, your motivation is achieving exactly what you want. And in this sense, it's whatever you want to achieve in life. Sometimes it can make you wake up early. And sometimes you wake up early for some time. And when, when you get that thing that you need, you can increase your sleep. So I just wanted to add that part over. <laughs> yeah. The Bible says, go to the ant, thou sluggard. Consider her ways and be wise. You know, ants are not lazy yeah. animals or creatures. <laughs> and so the yeah. Bible is teaching us to take a look at the ant and try to implement what the ant, you know, does as well. Yeah. Okay, fourth point. Choose your friends wisely. Mm -hmm. The Bible says, my son, if sinners entice you, consent thou not. Walk not down the way with them. Refrain thy foot from their path. If you hang out with a bunch of people who like to sin, if you hang out with a bunch of people who like to do bad stuff, you're probably going to do the same bad yeah. stuff. If you like to hang out with people who complain, you're probably going to find yourself that you're going to complain as well. Yeah. If you hang out with people who don't want to confront a fear, who are fearful people, you might become a fearful person as well. So you need to choose your friends wisely. Yeah, I agree with that 100%. Yeah. Um, because I understand that when I'm surrounding myself with the people that are positive-minded, my mind starts to be positive-minded. When I surround myself with people that love to learn, I would love to learn. I like to give examples of, of my Christian life. Um, so what happened is that when I was still... I used to not read the Bible as much as I read the Bible. And one day when I was still on YouTube, I found a pastor that I really loved. And he always talked about how much he has read the Bible a lot of times. And every one of his conversations was always filled with um, Bible calls and everything. And I was like, whoa, this person has memorized much Bible. And it made me read the, the amount of Bible that I've read. If it was not for him... I will not have read the Bible. And I believe that the Bible and God's principles are the best way to succeed financially. And not only financially, also even parenting. If we follow those principles, we'll be successful. So that's one thing that I, I implemented. I surrounded myself with people like my hubby. <laughs> 
yeah he's a very positive i mean you guys hear him like he is someone that really really in um encouraged me to be the person that i am right now and i'm really thankful for that so surrounding yourself with the uh, the people that i have right now is really really crucial and what i've noticed my wife started her youtube channel about three years ago i was surprised that a lot of people were not that supportive of her to do it yeah. and they kind of mocked it a little bit <laughs> now what's funny is after you started making some paychecks a lot of that mocking went away yeah but there's still if she would have listened to those people up front she would have never made it or you know the, even after she's successful there's still people who are not that encouraging about yeah. it so you need to choose your friends wisely surround yourself with people who are going to build you up or like-minded people that are going to help you to succeed so what does this have to do with finances well confronting the fear and overcoming takes some discipline learning something new takes some discipline controlling your sleep takes some discipline choosing your friends wisely takes some discipline what we've noticed is that when our lives are more disciplined, our finances are stronger as well. People who live disciplined lives typically have better finances as well. Mm -hmm. So this channel is, to, is devoted not only to encourage and motivate people, but also to give sound financial teachings to help people through their lives. And the very base of that a very foundational skill or a foundational need of that is to have discipline. So the four points in conclusion is confront a fear and overcome it. Number two, learn something new that you want to learn. Number three, control your sleep. And number four, choose your friends wisely. I'll, I'll finish with this uh, example. The rhinoceros. The charging rhino does He's the man just of that. stories. <laughs> I, I like animals, and especially like the rhinoceros. Yeah. The rhinoceros charges. Oftentimes when you see a rhinoceros, it's charging. It does just that. A charging rhino can knock over a bus. You don't see rhinos running backwards very often. You definitely don't see rhinos knocking over buses running backwards. So we need to push forward. When you're the second largest land animal in the world, and you're very powerful, you have thick skin, it's pretty easy to charge. We need to have that kind of mentality is to charge through life. Yeah. And have that thick skin to avoid any, uh, any you know, to avoid any spears from people that can try to penetrate us and, you know, stop us and push forward and knock over that bus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. My husband loves stories like this. And yeah, I agree 100%. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you, are, if you want stuff like finance advice and stuff like that, we'll be sharing all those in here in this channel and we'll be going all in. So make sure that you are subscribed if this video was fun to you and you're looking forward to all finance stuff like how we got rid of our credit card, which was a lot by credit the way. Card debt. Yeah, credit card debt. Still <laughs> yeah, we credit. still have a credit <laughs> Yeah, how we got rid of our credit card debt and stuff like that. Make sure that you are subscribed because we're going to be teaching how we do everything and live a minimalistic life and still be happy. So make sure you're subscribed, like, and do all those good things. And we'll see you in our next video, Lord willing. Bye-bye.